Today I'm talking about Alberto Maria's. And I've got fragrances here that I have in my collection that he's created, fragrances that I've worn in the past, fragrances launched a long time ago, more recent fragrances, and they are also fragrances targeted to both men and women, and then also unisex. So if you wanna find out about these fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, and yesterday I'm talking about Alberto Moria's, and I think, and I've noticed that out of all the perfumers out there, he does a lot of fragrances. He does a lot, like especially for Gucci, and I've actually got a couple of fragrances from Gucci here. It's like, it's like I, I, am I gonna do a, a specific Gucci video on Alberto Moria's fragrances? No, uh, I wanted to feature as many brands as I can and also, uh, you know, fragrances from uh, a while ago to today. And then I've also got some flankers of specific fragrances uh, that uh, are, you know, out there as well. But either way, I'll let you know about these ranked today, plus a few bonus fragrances. But before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So this is a fairly long video so I'm gonna start right off we're gonna go with the first one here uh, at number 20 this is Calvin Klein's CK1 a groundbreaking fragrance from 1994 this is a unisex fragrance that came out back then uh, when uh, fragrances were not generally unisex uh, they were more you know targeted male or female it was kind of like a very original thing for a fragrance back then at the height of Calvin Klein and its fashions and things like that but this was a very interesting fragrance it was very very fresh and green and citrusy uh, and with aromatic touches running throughout it for me I felt like it might lean a little more masculine than feminine, but that de definitely targeted unisex. And this is a fragrance that Alberto Morias did with uh, Harry Fremont. But it features lemons, green notes, bergamot, mandarin orange, cardamom, jasmine, lily of the valley, and violet. Yeah, there's some floral notes in there, but to me it's mostly a fusion of green notes, lemons, aromatics, citruses, spices, and things like that. It's, it's pleasant, but today this is very, very weak compared to what I remember back in the day. So number 20, Calvin Klein CK1. At number 19, another classic from the same year also a joint perfume where he created it with another perfumer this is one that I also wore I wore both of these I may mean, have worn all of these that I'm talking about but I wore these back in the early 90s mid 90s this is Tommy Hilfiger's Tommy cologne or Tommy boy from 1994 and this is targeted men for men and this is also created by a perfumer by the name of Annie Buzantian so they did this together and this was man now it's very very light but this was a intense a great smelling fragrance that I really really loved wearing started wearing this just before I started attending film school and I was really really into this particular smell I mean I was into a lot of fragrances but this one was very very special to me and I haven't worn it since probably towards the end of the 90s and I recently bought a bottle from uh, Marshalls for a very good price and wow it's gotten really really weak but once again uh, at the height of uh, Tommy Hilfiger's uh, fashions uh, this was a pretty big fragrance for the brand mint granny smith apples bergamot grapefruit lavender cranberry rose cotton flower cactus so in the end it's a fruity fresh experience and to me it's a lot fresher now than it is there's not the actual substantial kind of uh, qualities that this once had but very very uh, you know nostalgic for me brings back memories of when I was wearing this particular fragrance. So Tommy Hilfiger's Tommy Boy. All these fragrances are created by Alberto Moria's obviously. So we've got another fragrance here created by Alberto Moria's all on his own this time. This is from the house of Mabusan. This is Mabusan Ohm, this one right here. And this is a really yummy uh, amber fougere style fragrance. Let me open this up, it's a little tight. Uh, amber fougere meaning like a warm uh, fougere, a barbershop-y style with warm notes. So basically what do they add for warm notes? Vanilla is your basic warm notes plus cinnamon. So cinnamon spice, I find cinnamon very warm 
and this one features quite a bit of it. So we've got the lavender, vanilla, cinnamon, sandalwood, patchouli, sage, rosemary, bergamot, musk. It's a pleasant scent. It's also a very budget fragrance. Launched in 2003. I think it's a great scent. It might be a little weak. I think it's gone through the reformulations, but it's a smell as smell. It's a great, great smelling fragrance. So Mabusan Ohm from 2003 at number 17 going to the house of Xenia and as I said I'm, I'm covering as many brands as I can he's done a lot of fragrances for a lot of brands and I know he's also done a ton of fragrances for Bulgari and sadly I'm not I don't have any fragrances here. I, I haven't really been uh, buying Bulgari fragrances. I should kind of focus on uh, their signature line soon as well. But this is from Xenia. This is Xenia Womo from 2013. Male targeted fragrance. And once again, very, very fresh. And actually, it's uh, ozonic. Uh, that's what the deal with this particular fragrance is. And ozonic means the violet leaves. They're featuring violet leaves here. So there's a watery effect here. Lots of watery kind of effect. But it's not necessarily leaning marine, just acts very watery. And I think my best explanation for ozonic notes uh, is when you look, cut through a cucumber, look through the inside, you know that kind of watery, kind of gelatinous kind of look. That's kind of what I experienced with the violet leaves. And it's, you know, it's basically uh, the the main store, uh, star in this particular fra fragrance, the violet leaves. So it acts very, very ozonic. And it's also contrasted with citruses, so it's a very, very fresh experience with loads of citruses, bergamot, vetiver, and cedar. So by the time you get to the vetiver and cedar, it's uh, at the end uh, of its life, this particular fragrance. So for me, it's very, very fresh and ozonic, lightly woody and grassy, and it's dried down. So this is Zenyo Womo from 2013. I wanted to feature one of these fragrances, but I think this particular collection it might be gone already and I wanted to make sure all the fragrances you can still find and this is a fairly new fragrance I can't seem to find it anymore it's from the house of Zara and I did want to feature one fragrance from Zara this is morning sunray in Sevilla and uh, obviously I have to feature this because Alberto Morias is from Spain and Zara is a Spanish uh, clothing brand so had to fe feature one of them and this is my favorite of the three that launched earlier this year uh, there were two others uh, that I liked. I like the Barcelona one, but I like the Sevilla one the most, with Madrid being my least favorite. It's 2021 unisex, features lemons, citrus blossom, tarragon, rosemary, jasmine, and incense. And I feel like he's kind of captured this particular city, even though I've not been there. I know it's known for its uh, citruses, you know, those kind of things. And you've got the kind of the blossoms of the citrus with the lemons and the tarragon with some aromatic notes, of course, with the tarragon and rosemary. There's some floral touches in there. I'm assuming jasmine grows there. And of course, incense, there's got to be like, you know, Catholic churches there and things like that. So I think it's a great inspiration for a city. Uh, it's in the morning, obviously morning sun ray. It's very, very bright and uplifting and invigorating fresh uh, citrusy floral fragrance. So that's Zara Morning Sunray in Sevilla at number 16. And the way I rank this is the fragrances that came first, they are low but I wanted to highlight them because they were very, very, uh, you know, important fragrances uh, when those came out. But they have gotten weak, so I've, I've ranked them uh, lower. And the Sevilla one from Zara is pretty intense for being a Zara fragrance and also really smells great. All right, next fragrance going to the house of Aqua di Parma. This is Colonia Intensa, this one right here. And this is a joint fragrance once again. He created this with Francois de Maché of Dior, who just left. And I've realized in discovered that Francois de Maché, before he came to Dior, did a lot of Aqua de Parma fragrances, but this is not a video about Francois de Maché. We're talking about Alberto Moreas, and this is a great flanker to the original Aqua de Parma Colonia. This is from 20, uh, 2007. It's a unisex targeted fragrance, and basically the Intensa refers to adding intense notes in the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the Eau de Cologne style fragrance. And even though this is an Eau de Cologne, it's an intense version of it, but it features lots of citruses, bergamot, ginger, cardamom, lemons, leather, cedar, neroli, myrrh, benzoin. So you've got all these like uh, aromatic spices and citruses and zingy spices like ginger contrasted with this leather note, woods, and resins of uh, myrrh and benzoin. So there is a little bit of a sweet touch. And of course the leather in here kind of makes it a lot more masculine, a lot more intense. So it's taking that Eau de Cologne that uh, the Aqua de Parma line is known for, the original from a long time ago to a more intense, uh, a darker 
direction. So Aqua de Parma's Colonia Intensa. This next one is very, very special to me. Uh, and I bought it when it first launched in 2001. And I, I, me being the biggest fan of Mugler, enjoying the smell of Angel, loving uh, wearing uh, Amen. And this launched in 2001. It was the complete opposite of Amen, which I was wearing a lot of. This is Mugler's Cologne. This is the come together version that relaunched in 2008. The original launched in 2001 and I wore so, so much of it. I gave it as gifts to people, my dad and relatives and things like that because I felt like it was a great orange blossom citrus fragrance. Very, very fresh and floral and invigorating, uplifting. It's that Eau de Cologne style fragrance that's to die for. It's a, a unisex targeted release and again, at that time there were only two fragrances I think in the collection. Collection. No, I think there would have been more in the women's collection of Mugler fragrances, only one in the men's. And I really enjoyed it for the fact that it was unisex, it was an easy wear, but it features bergamot, white musk, petigran, neroli, orange blossom. The story is Mugler or Terry Mugler had gone to somewhere in uh, Morocco, I guess, and he got this soap and it smelled just like this. And so basically they were trying to, uh, you know, replicate that smell into a fragrance. And the funny thing is back in the early 2000s I stayed in a hotel I think it was the late early 2000s in a hotel in Paris and they had Mugler cologne products in this in the hotel in the room which was kind of like oh my god this is so cool it's one of my favorite fragrances and now I can actually you know use the products and things like that so either way a great fragrance uh, still great but lighter much lighter now uh, but uh, I think definitely is something that I really really love Mugler cologne from 2001 again this is the 2018 version. This next fragrance is a women's targeted release. This is from the house of Moschino. This is Toy 2. This is for women from 2018 and this uh, Alberto Marias did with uh, Fabrice Pellegrin. Um, so he does a lot of fragrances for Diptyque. This is a fun fragrance. Uh, it's a uh, fresh and fruity and floral, playful, um, white flowers come in. And this actually eventually after this they launched Toy 2, or no, Toy Boy. But Toy 2 is a re really a fun fragrance. There's a little bit of a tea-like effect in here with lots of apples, white currant, peony, magnolia, jasmine, musk, and sandalwood. You know, I really had dismissed their Windex bottle fragrance, which Alberto Morias did as well. But once they la launched the toy collection, I felt like they were doing something uh, definitely pleasant. There is an updated flanker of this one, I think a bubblegum version, which I haven't sampled yet, and I haven't seen uh, arrive here in the States. But I think this is a very, very uh, wonderful fragrance uh, and definitely worth adding here at number 13. It is for women, and I don't know if you are a woman or a man, let me know if you wear this particular fragrance. So Moschino Toy, two uh, at number 13 and just uh, to also let you know there is a toy one which was an actual teddy bear i've never smelled that fragrance but that one's really really pleasant there at uh, number 13 toy two go into the house of l'artisan parfumer this is la chante de camargue uh, which was launched in 2019 and it's a unisex fragrance this particular fragrance is very very unique to me it's very very powdery inspired by the camargue where the rice fields are and also known for the salt the the fleur to sell, which I've traveled to in the past. Uh, great experience going there in the south of France and uh, experiencing it. And I could see this inspiration. There's lots of rice notes in here with sandalwood, Paradisone, bergamot, and hedione. So there are some floral touches in here with that hedione note, kind of like jasmine, but the rice adds this powderiness. There's a little bit of a milkiness in here as well, but a very, very unique powdery experience and a great inspiration for a part of France, I think, uh, highlighting the rice fields and things like that. So this collection from L'Artisan uh, pays tribute to different regions of France, and I like this particular collection from L'Artisan. On. My favorite happens to be the one for Brittany, which is the aquatic citrus one, but I also really like the one inspired by um, drawing a blank. What's the island uh, in Corsica, uh, which is kind of like a mandarin orange to, uh, tonka bean, uh, you know, fragrance. Different perfumers, obviously, but La Chante de Camargue is created by Alberto Murias, and that's at number 12. Again, that's unisex and uh, launched in 2019. Okay, this next fragrance I spoke about last week for the inexpensive uh, fragrances video for, you know, buying gifts for holidays. 
I'm featuring it here again because Alberto Morias did create this one. This is from the house of Lomvan. This is Oxygen, this one right here. This is the original. They also launched a Pour Ohm, or Ohm, which I'm not featuring here. It didn't make the top 20, but this is a really, really great fragrance for the price. Really, really great milky gardenia lactonic experience with spices and things like that. It is for women. You know, you gotta see if you like fragrances like this and you don't mind wearing gardenias with milk and black pepper, definitely check it out. Out because it's very very inexpensive but again it's a wonderful fragrance featuring milk as a note so it's lactonic as I said creamy white floral gardenias come in as well gardenias I also feel like has a creaminess and then you've got that contrast of the black pepper musk iris sandalwood rose and bergamot milky fragrances sandalwood can go milky I like this kind of a, a chord that sandalwood creates and I like milky fragrances to begin with and it's a great uh, idea to combine milk with sandalwood and gardenia. It totally makes sense. Wonderful fragrance here, Lomvans Oxygen. And if you want to find out more about that and the men's, catch my video from last weekend focusing on inexpensive fragrances. It was a, a video of fragrances that are under $30. This next fragrance from the house of Armani, Aqua de Joe Profumo. I'm featuring the Profumo version and I still see this on the Armani website, but there is that rumor it's discontinued. Is it discontinued? I don't really know. I know that the Armani Armani website doesn't have the large, large bottle, but they have the other bottles um, that are, uh, you know, uh, selling, which is fine. I I'm just afraid it'll be sold out and no more. But it's a sad thing because this is my favorite version of this collection. But of course, I first discovered the original Aqua de Joe, which is weak now. But the Profuma version came out in 2015. It is for men. Features marine notes, bergamot, incense, patchouli, rosemary, sage, and geranium. So it's taking the original into a darker territory. You experience the marine notes, but I think this is a really, really great marine fragrance. I think it smells great. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Alberto Morias does a lot of marine fragrances and a lot of them I don't care for. This one actually really, really smells great because it has the patchouli and the incense contrasted with the marine notes. So it makes the, the marine touches uh, really, really bearable to wear. And I really, really like this version. It's a little dark, but it smells a lot more like the original when I first wore it back in the 90s in comparison to what it smells like. Either way, a great collection I still think that Alberto Morias has created for Armani and this currently is my favorite and it's at number 10. This fragrance is a unisex fragrance going to the house of Initio Parfums. This is Blessed Baraka, this one right here. And this is kind of a simplistic fragrance. The more I wear it, the more I realize it's a little sim simplistic. It does get sweet, it does get powdery, it does get dry, it does get ambery, it does get musky, and then of course woody. It's uh, unisex targeted from 2015 and basically features amber, musk, sandalwood. I can think that there's a little bit of vanilla in here as well, but in the end it's a dry, dusty, vanillic, ambery, sweet, woody fragrance. A great scent from the house of Initio Parfums. I think this is the only thing that he's created for this house. I could be wrong, but I think this is the only one, but uh, definitely worth uh, featuring here uh, in this video. So at number nine, Initio Parfums Blessed Baraka. And as I said, I don't have every single Alberto Moria's fragrance in, you know, in my arsenal here. So I've only featured stuff that I have. And I think these are definitely a great fragrances that he's created, either used to be great or still smell great. So number eight, going to the house of Baikillian. Yes, I am featuring a Baikillian fragrance. This is Musk Oud, this one right here. Sadly that this is the only Oud fragrance still selling from the Arabian Nights collection from uh, Killian, which came the last. This is the last one that was introduced in that collection. Every other one, there's four that got discontinued. But Musk Oud is a Musk and Oud rose combo. Launched in 2013, it is unisex and basically features Oud, Musk, Rose, Geranium, Cardamom, Coriander, Incense, Rum, and Patchouli. Definitely has that kind of Middle Eastern uh, smelling style of Oudy, a rosy kind of musky fragrance that I quite like. Uh, again, once again, it's not a loud fragrance, but as a smell, it's really, really fantastic. I really, really enjoy this one. And although, I should take it back, I really enjoyed some of the other fragrances in the collection, but still really enjoy this particular one. Like, let's say, uh, let's say that Alberto Moria has created Rose Oud for 
Killian and it's still selling, I would have featured that at the very, very top because it was one of my favorite fragrances. But this one kind of is at number eight, but still a really, really solid smelling fragrance uh, from Killian. This is by Killian's Musk Oud from 2013. The next fragrance I'm talking about is from the House of Penhaligans. This is the Tragedy of Lord George, this one right here. I wanted to also feature Iris Prima. I don't see it on the Penhaligans website anymore, so uh, I'm not going to feature that. But this one is still selling and it's probably more most amazing looking bottles, right? I love the horns here from this uh, deer. But this is a, a great smelling, classy, masculine, fougere style fragrance. According to the notes, it's woodsy notes, brandy, so it's boozy. There's boozy touches, shaving soap, and tonka beans. So yes, you've got shaving soap in here, so there is a certain smell with shaving soap. There is that definitely going for it, kind of lavender aromatic. And then tonka beans are traditionally featured in uh, you know fougere fragrances so this is kind of like a boozy uh, woodsy take on a barbershop fragrance that's actually quite uh, great smelling a great fragrance from this house at number seven Penhaligon's the tragedy of lord george one of you was asking me to do a video on this collection sadly i don't own a lot so i can't really put together something and then i'm seeing a lot of things get discontinued as well so anyway this is the tragedy of lord lord george from 20 16. Next fragrance is a woman's targeted fragrance. One of my favorite women's fragrances. This is from the house of Cartier. This is Le Baiser du Dragon. This could be Cartier's answer to something like Mugler's Angel because it features lots of patchouli. It's a patchouli overload, but it is contrasted with boozy amaretto, like an almond liqueur, along with almonds and also caramel. So it's sweet, patchouli, boozy, all combined together for a warm, spicy experience. Very, very delicious. Absolutely love it. But it does feature amaretto, bitter almonds, vetiver, patchouli, cedar, benzoin, iris, amber, musk, gardenia. Again, I do get caramelly touches in here, although they're not crediting the caramel. There's a little bit of a, kind of like a sweet syrupy, caramelized kind of a smell in here. Really, really a wonderful fragrance. Again, I wanted to highlight some fragrances that he's done for different houses, because he does tend to focus on Gucci, Bulgari, and of course his own line, Misancir, but uh, definitely a great uh, smelling fragrance from 2003. This is for women. This is uh, Le Baiser du Dragon from the house of Cartier. Okay, next fragrance, we're going to the house of Chopard. This is Orange Moresque. This one right here from 2018. This is a uh, unisex targeted release. And Orange Moresque is for me, oranges, lots of them. It's an orangey experience with lots of resins. So there's an ambery balsamic resinous experience in here. So oranges to me, I find there's an ambery touch with oranges as well. Not your traditional amber, but just a kind of a citrus amber kind of an effect, but with the contrast in and blending of resins in along with the orange. So you get like an amber over, overload with citrusy touches from the oranges. Add some floral notes and additional citruses in the notes as well and you've got for a great smelling orangey, ambery, resinous, balsamic experience. Really, really great fragrance. Smells fantastic and I really love that contrast of oranges with the resins. Very, very unique but really, really wonderful to wear. It basically kind of intensifies the smell of the oranges. If you don't know this one, do check it out. This is Chopard Orange Moresque from 2018 and that's at number five. Go into the house of Gucci next. This is Hortis Sanitatis. This has become one of my favorite fragrances from this collection. I absolutely love the way it smells. This particular co collection for Gucci, the Alchemist Garden collection, doesn't seem to be the most oomphy fragrances, but they have some really, really great smells. And this one to me is so original smelling that I can't get enough of. It's basically vetiver, papyrus, ginger, and cedar. So there is a kind of a rosiness in there almost, I mentioned this in a couple of other videos. It smells like barbecued roses to me, but more about the smokiness rather than like, you know, cooking things, kind of a barbecue. Very, very unique smell. And I think that's created from the papyrus. I don't know where the rosiness is coming from, but it is kind of rosy. And a couple of days ago, I did a video for the latest, A Gloaming Night. Once again, no mention of roses in the notes. There is a little bit of a rosiness in there as well. This, to me, I prefer this one a lot more than A Gloaming Night, and it's this amazing kind of a smell. Very, very unique kind of a smell, and I like that. I think it's just the papyrus and some notes combined together to create this kind of like 
toasted barbecued kind of a rosy experience. Anyway, Hortus Sanitatis from 2020 by the house of Gucci. Next up, going to the house of Mise en Cire. My favorite fragrance from this house, this is For Your Love from 2019. It's unisex. Oh boy, this is so delicious, guys. It kind of is ambroxany and it might hint at something like Baccarat Rouge, but it's its unique kind of a creation. Basically, it features some synthetic notes like Exaltone, which is musk, Cachalox, which is an ambergris, raspberry, benzoin, and patchouli. Very, very sexy, amazing trail with this one. Wear it in the heat and you'll be impressed by the smell you leave behind and people will be following you, chasing you down the street when uh, you know you have this on. It's really, really a, ph a phenomenal release. It's very, very musky, but also very very sexy with light hints of fruits and things like that great fragrance from the house of mise en cire this is for your love number two going to the house of gucci once again this is gucci guilty absolute pour homme fantastic fragrance i had dismissed gucci fragrances in almost of 2010s until this came out in 2017 and i was so impressed by how great it is it's a very very masculine fragrance very I wouldn't say this is an old school fragrance, but it's kind of on the powerhouse kind of side of men's fragrances and so different than every other Gucci Guilty app, Gucci Guilty Pour Homme fragrances, not the Absolute. The Absolute, I think, is the most amazing in the collection and definitely deserves a number two spot. I really, really love it. In fact, I think he did a fragrance for Killian called Dark Lord that kind of smells like this. This, to me, is amazing, so definitely worth it of the number two spot, but we're dealing with very massive notes of leather, vetiver, cypress, woods, and patchouli. No citruses here, no freshness, just this dense, dark, woods, leather kind of an experience that's definitely amazing. So this is Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Homme at number two. Can you guess my number one? Going to the house of Amouage, this is Journeyman. Such a great fragrance this is. It's so good. It's really, really great fragrance. He did this uh, with another uh, perfumer, and I can't remember the name of the perfumer right now. I'll have it in the notes. But this, to me, wow, it is so, so good. A very underrated amouage that I can't get enough of. This came out in 2014. It is for men. It features notes of tobacco, leaf, incense, Sichuan pepper, leather, juniper berries, cardamom, cypriol, tonka. You know, a very, very great combination of notes with tobacco leaf. You know, it is tobacco-y. It is a little smoky, kind of a ashy tobacco. And incense comes in, and then Sichuan pepper, the spiciness, the lemony... Um accord that it creates the Sichuan pepper and then the leather very very unique combination of notes it's very very masculine once again and it's a given that my number one and number two are very very masculine fragrances and both targeted to men and I, I just can't get enough of this is probably one of my all-time favorite amouage fragrances it is one of the best and it's also one of the least hyped not a lot of people talk about it but definitely deserve the deserves the attention if you like very very masculine fragrances definitely check out Amouage Journeyman. And that's my number one fragrance, uh, a fragrance that's created by Alberto Moriez. And I hope you enjoyed this collection of fragrances. And as I said, I don't own every single Alberto Moriez created fragrance. This is definitely a great profile and overview of the, the man that that's around. Like if you uh, have uh, been, you know, smelling fragrances, you probably have smelled one or two or three uh, of his fragrances, if not many more. So you definitely know his fragrances. And now that you've seen this video of what he's created, uh, I'm sure you've smelled at least one of these fragrances. But either way, let me know what your favorite Alberto Moria's fragrances are. Put a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the fragrances I featured in this video. And what should I check out next? As I said, I don't have any Bulgari fragrances fragrances created by Alberto Moriaz, especially the signature. I think he mostly works on the signature line. Put some comments down and let me know what I should check out next uh, from Bulgari. But either way, let me know anything that you like of his. Uh, I'd like to find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Two more fragrances that Alberto Moriz has created, and both of these launched in 2021. These are targeted to women, but if you 
don't mind fragrances like this and you're a man, check them out. Uh, this next one is from the house of Killian. Once again, this is a kiss from a rose. A great, great fragrance. Very, very unique smelling rose with lots of green notes. Uh, there's some fruity black currant. Of course, the roses. Cypriol comes in again. Jasmine and white musk. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It's a very, very green rose. Lightly fruity touches running throughout it. But a beautiful fragrance. Really, really beautiful fragrance created for women, but... You know, I really enjoy wearing this particular one. This is uh, Killian's A Kiss from a Rose, launched in 2021. And the next fragrance I wanted to highlight is from Gucci. And once again, this is Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. Really love this bottle, it's beautiful. And I love the detailing of the flowers on it, as you can see. This is created uh, along with Honorine Blanc. Features lots of gardenia with pear blossom, jasmine, brown sugar, patchouli. So it is very, very floral up top, and it does settle to kind of like a sugary, dark sugar kind of patchouli woods kind of an experience. There's a bit of earthiness in here, but it's the contrast of lots of white flowers, of course, with the gardenia, the jasmine, and the pear blossom, and then that sugar, dark sugar, and patchouli kind of a dry down very very beautiful and it's a really really beautiful bottle as well and this is once again Gucci's Flora Gorgeous Gardenia from 2021 it is for women and that's all I have for you today thanks so much for watching goodbye